Well, good morning, One Hope. I'm so glad to get to see all of your faces from right up here up front to all the way up to the very tip top. I see all these smiling faces this morning, and I'm glad to get to see you here today. Um, Welcome, and thank you for joining us. If you are here, if it's your first time, we want to just say welcome. We hope that you are enjoying the time that you're here today and that you leave here knowing that you've been touched because God's going to be meeting us today, I know. So we've got April who's hosting us online today, so if you are online, and watching her. If you'll take just a minute, tell her hello. Tell her where you're from. I've got some Ohio friends here today um, visiting from Ohio. So also if you're watching online or even in the room, if you'll take just a moment with our Facebook feed and like it and share it. That'll be great if you can do that. Well, today... We are kicking off a brand new sermon series called Servolution. And we believe that each and every one of us has a calling on our lives. No matter who you are, we believe God has called you to do something specific for him. It's a calling, first of all, to know him. And it's a calling to go and make a difference. You see, the gospel is good news, right? The gospel is good news, but it's not just for those of us who are sitting in this room. It's for those outside of these walls of this building that we call One Hope. And so the kingdom of God is like an upside down kind of place. It's not about climbing the ladder of success. It's about serving and making a difference in the lives of others. And so that's what this is all about. I want to read a scripture with you this morning as we get started. And it's in Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28. And it says this, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So over the next several weeks, we're going to really be diving deep and seeing how God wants to revolutionize the world around us as we embrace the heart of being a servant. God wants to use you and you and you. How about me? And you. (laughs) And you too. He wants to use you to make a difference in your world that's all around you. See, God is calling us as a church to get up, Get out of those comfortable seats. The ones we say are the most comfortable in all of the whole Polk County and probably the state of Florida, if I'm really. Um, we got to get up out of our seats. It's time we got to go serve the community. Yeah, It's time the, to do that. Out of our seats and into the streets so we can serve and make a difference. That's what God is calling each and every one of us to do. And, and uh, we're called. Um, uh, we're called. In the last few weeks, we've, uh, or last few years, We've done something that we've called Love Week, and uh, it's about to drop again this year. Uh, Mark your calendars. Uh, Love Week is February 20th to the 26th, and uh, we're excited about that as we get intentional about serving and about reaching out to our community here and making a difference. And uh, I'm praying that God would put a, a, a passion in each and every one of us. To see our community as, 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 as the people that, that need a touch from God. I mean, we, we, we complain a little bit, y'all, don't we? About all the new houses going up and all the extra traffic and all the things like that. But, but I'm praying that God would put it in our hearts to recognize and realize that every new roof right. is a new soul. Every new roof is another heart that needs to be touched by God. Every new car on the road is another life. And y'all know they need a touch from God because they don't know how to drive, y'all. <laughs> but, but, but I pray that God would put a passion in us for the people in our community and that we would see uh, God change people's lives. Do uh, you remember how God has changed your life? Do you remember how he transformed you from what you used to be to what you are now? I know you hadn't arrived. I know we're all still working on ourselves a little bit. But God has brought us uh, far from where we used to be. And if he's done that for you, 
He can do that for somebody else. Hey, if God can transform your life, he can change anybody. <laughs> I want to continue reading in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 13 in the message. It says this, let me tell you why you are here. Oh, I like that. It's just plain and simple. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. I love the way it puts that. Uh, if you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? Uh, you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. Uh, like if you don't get the salt thing, right? If you don't get that, let, let me give you another illustration to put it this way. He, he, he says this, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in this world. God is not a secret to be kept. Hide it under a bushel. No, right? I'm going to let it shine. Hey, we're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. Uh, if, you, or if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop on a light stand, shine, shine, keep open house. Be generous with your lives by opening up to others. You'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. I love this passage, and, and I love this rendering of it. See, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He, he wants you to change your world. Can I say that again for you? God wants you to change your world. Now, I didn't say he wants you to change the world. That's pretty big. Uh, that, that, that's pretty overwhelming to say, I'm, I, I, God has called me to change the world. But can I tell you, he's, char he's charged you. He's called you. His purpose for your life is for you to have a direct impact and create a change in your world, the world around you. Mother Teresa, she understood this when she was asked one time, uh, how do you feed the world? Her answer was this. You start with one. You start with one. Hey, how do you impact your world? You start with just one person around you. Start with one. God is calling us to be positive change agents in the world that's around us. And the challenge is that not many people like change. We don't really care for change all that much. Let me illustrate that for you real quick. I'm going to demonstrate. Everybody cross your arms. Go ahead. Come on, cross your arms. I won't think you're mad at me. Just cross your arms. The interesting thing is we, we, we do this all the time, right? We cross our arms. We cross our arms. We've, we've crossed our arms thousands of times, right? And I'll bet you probably always cross them the same way. Don't you? I mean, there is another way you can cross your arms, right? But we never do it the other way. We do it this way, right? We always, we always cross them like this. And, 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 but you know what? Let's, let's try it. Come on, you can just switch it real quick. Can you even do it? I don't even know if I can do it. Like I have to do it like this. Like I, it's, it's, it, it's uncomfortable. Like, I don't even know. Like, did I do it right? I'm not sure. I, you know, this is not... This is not comfortable. All right, that's weird. I'm going back to the other way. Come on, y'all. Can't get back to the right way. All right, let me illustrate it one more, one more way. Clasp your hands with me, right? Repeat after me. Now I lay me down to sleep. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, do that. Uh, uh, we, we've done this thousands of times, right? We, we've crossed our hands, and, and guess what? Just how you've crossed your hands 
there's another way to cross your hands. But we don't normally do it, but, but I want you to get out of your comfort zones today. Can you just try to switch those thumbs and cross it a different way for just a minute? Can you do it? You know, you, you had your maybe your right thumb over the top. Now you got your left hand over the top or vice versa. I don't know. I'm right-handed, so do left-hand people start with the left hand over the top? Is that what y'all do, left-handers? Yeah, okay. Sorry y'all do it differently. <laughs> I, I don't know if Jesus answers our prayers this way. i got to go back the other way, right? <laughs> I, I, I mean, we've done it thousands of times. We like to do it the same way, don't we? Just a, just a little illustration. The challenge we have in changing the world around us that we live in is that we've got to be such a positive influence on other people's lives that will attract them to want to change. Because we don't normally like to change. See, Jesus assumes that we are salt and light. He didn't say you are to be salt and light. So like one day when you read all your Bible and you prayed a whole lot and you went to a bunch of church services and you had that one preacher pray over you, you're going to be able to be salt and light. One day over in the glory land. No, that's not what he said. He didn't say you are to be salt or to be light. You are. You are salt and, and light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You've got to step into that, and you've got to step up into that and lean into that to be what God has said that you are. You're to make things better. You're to make things brighter in the world that's around you. But change is hard, y'all. So when, 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 do we, when do we change? John Maxwell, y'all heard of him? He's like a leadership guru. He was a pastor for many years. He speaks to the church world leadership, but he also speaks to uh, corporate America. He's written loads and loads of books. He says there are four times in our lives when we change. The first one's this. We change when we hurt enough that we have to. Y'all been there before? When it just hurts so bad that I, I can't keep doing this. This is this, painful. I got to have a change. We've all been in that place where we were kind of backed into a corner and we're like, Uncle, I give up. I can't do this. I got, I'm going to change. I'm going to change. Here's another uh, way that we change. We change when we are inspired to change. In other words, we see someone else that is such an inspiration to our lives. We're like, wow, look at them. Look at them. I'd like to live the way that they're living. I'd like to do what they're doing. Hey, that's, that's, that's kind of why Love Week is so important. It's a catalyst for us to be an inspiration to others that they see what you're doing and, and what God is using you to do. And, and they say, wow, I, I could do that. I could be part of something like that. And they get inspired to make a difference in the lives of other people. Here's the third way Maxwell says we change. We change when we learn enough to want to. When we learn enough to want to, there's some things that I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know. Just ask my son. Because <laughs> at 17 and a half, he knows way more than I do. There'll come a day when I know more than him. <laughs> Maybe. But as I learn more, I get to the place where I want to change. Because I learn the deficiencies that I have. I learned the deficits in my life. I learned the things that like, wow, I, I, I didn't know that. I need to change my life. Here's the last one. We change when we receive enough that we're able to. When we receive enough that we're able to. And, and this morning, this message is all about how to do that, to change. 
So many of us want to make a difference. We want to change ourselves so we can make a difference in the lives of others around us, but we really don't know how to do it. We're just like, hey, I want to, but what do I do? God, I want to serve you, but how do I do that? God, I want to make a difference in my neighborhood, on my job, in my classroom at school. God, I want to make a difference in the lives of my family, but how do I do it? Don't know how. Many of us live in a place every day where we are around people that desperately need Jesus. I mean, they're, they're, they're desperate for Jesus. For Jesus. They may not know that they're desperate for Jesus, but they're desperate for something in their lives. And, and they desperately need the love of God. They desperately need the grace of God in their lives and, and the peace of God in their lives and the hope that's only found in Jesus. And guess what? God hasn't called me as your pastor to reach all of your friends. I know some of y'all may think that's my job. Bible says, I am to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. <laughs> that means my job is not to go out and do it for you. I got to do it for me, but I'm not supposed to do it for you. I am to help you to be engaged and ready to reach out and make a difference in the lives of the people around you. He's called you. He's called you to be salt in your neighborhood. Uh, you're, you're to get the God flavors out around you. He's called to be you to be light in your world and in your community and in your family and on your job. That's you. And so I want to share a few things today. If we want to be salt and light in our world, here's the first thing we need to do. We need to value people. We've got to value people. We've got to become what I would call a connector to people in our world. See, if you wear the name Christian, then, then, then you're saying, I want to be like Jesus. In fact, I want to uh, show Jesus and connect others to Jesus the Jesus that I know, the Jesus that has changed my life, the Jesus that has transformed me, the Jesus that healed my body, that provided for me in a financial way, that, that put my marriage back together, the Jesus that helped me raise my kids in the right way, the Jesus that has transformed my life. I want to connect that Jesus to the world around me. And we got to do that by valuing everyone valuing everyone i know i know this kind of gets a little tricky right jesus can i just value the people that i kind of like <laughs> people that are kind of like me that kind of i get along with don't make me value that neighbor down the road that don't do the right thing they put their trash can out for three days y'all they don't cut their grass. They, you know, they, they let their kids run around. And, man, they let their dog poop everywhere. Oh, y'all don't know about that? Every neighborhood's got somebody that's <laughs> fussing about the dog pooping someplace, y'all. Yeah, I don't care where you live. We got to value everyone. Not just the people we get along with. Not just the people that do the right thing all the time. Not just the people that look like you or sound like you or, 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 or go to the places that you go. In fact, we've got to value people because that's what Jesus did. He valued everyone. In fact, he valued people that most people didn't value. Matthew chapter 25, we're just keeping it in Matthew today. Matthew 25, but we'll get away from there in a minute. But Matthew 25, beginning in verse 35, Jesus says this, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I, I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, 
What are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Thirsty and give you a drink? Uh, When did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. Jesus values people so much that when we value people, he takes it personally. He says, when you serve others, you're serving me. Some of you are like, I just want to be so close to Jesus, Pastor. I just want to get close to Jesus in my life. Help me to get close to Jesus. Hey, you want to be close to Jesus? Start valuing people. And by the way, people can tell when they're valued and when they're not valued. Second part of being salt and light to this world is that we need to not just value people, but we need to add value to people. It's one thing to say, hey, I'm going to value and appreciate others. But it's another thing to say, hey, what am I going to do to add value to them? Because one thing, I appreciate you. Words are so easily thrown, thrown out and not meant and nothing actually done. We've got to add value. We've got to begin to add value and become an influencer in the lives of those that are around us. So where do we start? We start right where you are. Just look around. There's people around us every day where we could make a difference in their lives. We can add value to them with our actions. You could share a kind word. Man, how much did that cost you? Just a kind word. You could offer a listening ear to someone. You can actually pray for them, not just tell them, I'll be praying for you. You can actually pray for them. All of these things add value to them, uh, and, and it costs you nothing but maybe a little bit of your time and a little bit of your attention. See, good intentions, I believe, are overrated. Uh, they, 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 they've never really changed a person's lives, good intention does. If we want to see forward movement, if we want to gain some traction, we gotta, we got to put some things into action. I like that. You're going to gain some traction, put it into action. You might can remember that. The Apostle Paul understood this. Check out what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning in verse 19. It says, Even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people, religious, non-religious, uh, meticulous moralists, loose living immoralists, the defeated, the, the demoralized, whoever. I didn't take on their way of life. Like, hey, pastor, I'm just trying to identify with everybody. So that's why I'm out at the bars on Saturday nights. Just hanging out. Man, just trying to be real with everybody. Hey, you're going to be so real that you're going to be just like them, right? It says I can identify with people, but I don't have to do everything that they do. He says I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I think as believers, sometimes we need to be careful about this. And we, we, we can speak our own little Christian language. And we can see things just from one finite perspective. And sometimes it's, it, 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 it's important for us to be able to identify with other people and just take a step back, take a breath. I knew I grew up this way my whole life. I knew I was told this my whole life. I was taught this in Sunday school my whole life. I was, you know, blah, 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 whatever, okay? Take a moment. 
Think about a person who's never done that. What about the person who never went to Sunday school in their life? Some of you are like, what's Sunday school? (laughs) I don't like school five days a week. I got to go on Sundays? Hey, welcome to my world growing up. (laughs) This is like extra class beyond Sunday morning service that you go to and they taught you the Bible. Some of us didn't have that experience. Some people don't know all your Christian jargon. They don't know all the, the ins and outs of what you, you have been taught. So sometimes we've got to take a step back. Can I see things from their perspective for a minute? What if I didn't have the same experiences that I've had growing up? What if I didn't have uh, the home that I have right now, the family that I have right now? What if I uh, didn't have the support system that I have from a church or, or a hope group or uh, a body of friends? What, what if I didn't have that? How would I feel if I was in their situation? Paul says, I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did all this because of the message I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. Paul was intentional about changing his world. And if we want to change the world around us, our world, then we've got to be intentional about serving and adding value to others. So our perspective is important. My my perspective determines my attitude. John Maxwell also says this. He says, how we view things is how we do things, right? How we view things is how we do things. So if I see somebody as weak, I'll be like, hey, I want to help you. If I see somebody as broken, I'm like, hey, I want to I try to help fix you. Uh, but if we see somebody as valuable, we'll say, I want to serve you. I want to serve you. They're valuable, right? You ever been in a place and all of a sudden, like, uh, somebody important walked into the room, and everybody just like it don't matter. Excuse me, I gotta go t- handle this, right? And, and it's just they they go deal with those people, and and that's the way we need to treat everybody. They're valuable. Here's a third part of being salt and light in our world. If we want to be salt and light, we've got to live good values. We gotta live good values. We can't just say we have good values. We've got we to gotta live them out. It's one thing to value people. It's another thing to add value to people. But it's a completely different thing for us to live those good values throughout our lives. This is what makes us attractive to others around us. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, uh, in the Passion Translation, verse 22 and 23, says, Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Limitless. We've got to live our lives in such a way that we live the kind of values that we talk about. Let me share one more thing as we wrap up today. One more principle of being salt and light in our world, and that is we've got to share good values. This is all about transformation and transforming Seeing people's lives transformed. Did you notice the common word in all of these principles of becoming salt and light is is that we value people. We add value to people. We live good values. We share good values. Values are so important. You, You see, being salt and light and experiencing transformation, it begins with our values, What's inside of us? Most people would recognize the term, the golden rule. Some people say, I'm going to live by the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's actually scriptural. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 says, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. See, values create stability in our lives they help to anchor us 
uh, where we need to be. And by the way, if you have good values on the inside, you usually need less validation on the outside. I better say that one more time. If you got good values on the inside, it means that you probably don't need as much validation from the outside. Where you just try to do whatever somebody else wants you to do in order to win their favor and their 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 uh, they love you and they care for you and you're like getting validated from them. Hey, our values is what validates us. Let me tell you today that I believe that we all have an inner desire to make a difference in the world that's around us. And I want to close with this verse, Romans chapter 15 and verse 1. Strength is for service, not status. Each one of us needs to look after the good of the people around us. Asking ourselves... How can I help? How can I help? We're going to serve our community in a couple of weeks with some targeted opportunities. But a real servolution begins when each one of us comes before God and says, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. How can I help? Many years ago, I took a, a group of students from our church in North Carolina across the country to Los Angeles, California for a week. It wasn't a trip to Disneyland. It wasn't a trip to go see the L.A. Dodgers. It wasn't so we could visit some movie studio. We went to serve people. And some people might say, well, didn't there, wasn't there people in your own town in North Carolina y'all could serve? Yeah. It's hard to get people excited about serving right where they're at most of the times. But people get ramped up about going somewhere else to serve somebody. And as a pastor, as a leader, my goal is like, if I can get them over there and they'll get a heart for serving, when they come back, God will keep that heart in them and they'll start serving right where they're at. And so as a youth pastor, I took students to uh, the Dream Center there uh, in Los Angeles at, and Angelus Temple Church uh, led by the great Pastor Matthew Barnett. Uh, Pastor Barnett built, built this amazing church there through serving people. Uh, his father, Pastor Tommy Barnett, uh, pastored a, a great church in Phoenix, Arizona for many, many years and he helped his son get this going there in Los Angeles and and they always taught this lesson that kind of stuck with me. Pastor Tommy Barnett always said this quote, Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. Hey, there are needs around you every day. Matter of fact, the need's so great that on your own you can't accomplish fixing everything but can I challenge you just because you can't fix it all doesn't mean you shouldn't try to fix one thing find a hurt and heal it hey you may not be a doctor or anything, but there are people that are suffering with wounds on the inside you can be a friend you can be a listening ear you can be somebody that, that gives a, a, a kind word and and thoughtful attention. In just uh, a few days, we're going to be launching Love Week here and doing projects around our community. And I, I, I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll sign up. Hey, everybody that, that comes and serves at, at one of our uh, 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 Servolution Love Week events, uh, we'll get you a t-shirt with a New logo. Did y'all like that new logo? That was kind of cool. I like that. Uh, thank you, Orlando. <laughs> uh, we'll get you a t-shirt and we, we'll serve people. And, and, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the opportunity. Thank you, guys. Many of you gave in the legacy offering last week to help fund 
this Love Week adventure. Uh, you guys gave $2,000 last week to help fund that. And it's not too late, right? You can still give to, to, to Legacy and, and, and Love Week. All you got to do is grab one of the envelopes near you and just mark it Legacy or, or Love Week. Uh, you can go to online to give and, and click the drop-down menu, and there's a place for Legacy. All of those funds designated for that, it's going to go to help. Guess what? It's going to cost more than $2,000. I'll just tell you. For the last several years, we've given $1,000 away at a grocery store uh, every year. So, I mean, there's half of it right there. So maybe God will lay something on your heart that you haven't participated yet, and you'll be part. Uh, that'll be great. But uh, I, I want us to be part of this love week. But what I really want is that God put something in each and every one of our hearts that every day will be love week. That every day will be servolution in our lives. That every day we'll find a need and fill it. We'll find a hurt and heal it. And there may not be fanfare and nobody may give you a t-shirt. But you'll be making a difference in the world around you. You'll be doing what God has called you to do as a believer. To be salt and light to the world that you're in. In your home, your family, your neighborhood, your job, your school, your community. Let me pray for you today. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Lord, your message to us this morning is very clear. We are salt. We are light. But it's also motivating uh, uh, to us because... You, you, you not only called us to be that, but, but Lord, you've called that we are that. And, and so I pray uh, that, that you would touch our lives today. Uh, Lord, where we uh, need strength to, to do things, I, I pray you'd, you'd strengthen us. Lord, where we need opportunities, I pray you'd open up uh, unexpected doors of opportunity for us to to make a difference in the lives of people that are around us every single day. God, I pray that we would not just ask, Lord, what do I do? But Lord, that we would begin to take action. God, even today, and begin to do what you've called us to do. To be a salt agent. <laughs> to flavor the world around us, to be a, a light on a stand shining brightly around us. That from this day forward that we would uh, not only be a church, but, but each and every one of us would recognize our part, that we have a part every day in serving and giving and loving and sharing and caring and reaching and lifting others up so that we're adding to the kingdom of God every day. Pray not only that we would change our world, but we would be obedient to you. And as we do that, God, we know you're going to change us from the inside out. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, if that's for you today, just reach your hands out and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a calling on my life. Thank you, God, for a, a purpose that you've given me. Thank you for the empowerment by your Holy Spirit to walk in, in the calling that you've brought into my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. By next Sunday... We're going to have uh, opportunities listed on our website for you to start signing up to, to serve during Love Week. And, and hey, let me just encourage you, don't wait till next week. Start your own Love Week campaign serving yourself 
this week right where you live. Find a need and fill it. Find a, a hurt and heal it. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to an open door. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you to serve someone this week. And let's start a servolution in our community and in our church. Well, why don't you stand? We always close our service with a blessing. We want to bless you today. Thank you for being here. So many of your uh, guests today. I, I got to meet several people from uh, all over Michigan, North Dakota, and just all kinds of places today. Thank you for being here with us. We love it when you come and, and visit. And thanks for all of our, uh, I, I'll say home folks, all our home folks that are here today. That's what Pastor Strader used to call them, home folks. Yeah, yeah, that's what he called them, home folks. Yeah, Isn't that right, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, thanks for the home folks being here today. Thanks for those that are watching online today. We love you guys too. Well, hey, if you want a little blessing, you can put your hands out like this. But if you want a big blessing, just open your arms out like this. We pray that the Lord would bless you, that the Lord would keep you, that his face would shine on you and show you his favor this week. Hey, we love you guys. God bless you. Grace and peace to your house is our prayer for you. Hey, remember, you can drop your offering and your connection cards in the buckets, as well as we'd love to see you out there for Connect. Step one today, I even buy you popcorn. Have a great week.